Why would anybody move to Kansas City? After all, why not? Believe it or not, it's a question that we get frequently. And in this video, we're gonna talk about some things that are happening in Kansas City over the next few years to help you decide whether or not you should move here or if you should move away from here. And we're getting after it right now. And welcome back. I'm Kyle, your Kansas City Realtor with the Moving to KC team. We love helping people relocate to buy and sell real estate in Kansas City. But one of the questions that I'll get from time to time is, why would anybody want to live in Kansas? And that's how you know it's somebody that hasn't done their research because they'll refer to it as just Kansas, not knowing that Kansas City is actually comprised of really two states, Kansas and Missouri. And they don't consider the fact that Kansas City is actually the 31st largest metropolitan area in the entire entire country and it's primed for major growth here in the coming years. But I do think it's a valid question, especially if you're relocating to or thinking about buying real estate in a city. You want to know what the trajectory is of that city. What are their future plans? What are some of these up and coming developments and events and things that are going to benefit the city, which in turn should benefit your investment? Because as a city grows and the population grows, the appreciation grows with it. Have the new KC Current Stadium, which is the first ever stadium constructed for a national women's soccer team being built in Berkeley Riverfront Park for the KC Current. But sports aren't the only thing that we have to be excited about. Penway Point is a new mixed-use entertainment district that's set to open at the end of 2023 in downtown Kansas City in the Crossroads Art District. The former six-acre industrial site will feature a 170-foot tall Ferris wheel, which will have heated and cooled gondolas so you can take in breathtaking views of the city year round. It'll also feature volleyball and pickleball courts, a miniature golf course, and an outdoor movie screen. Then you'll have Lumi, which is an indoor outdoor museum and features vintage neon signs collected from different businesses in Kansas City and displayed throughout the space. What I love most about this project is their plan to remodel the historic buildings that actually sit on the site currently, as opposed to demolishing them and building new structures, while also adding a much needed recreational space for people who live in the Crossroads District in downtown Kansas City. The budget for this project is $25 million and it reminds me a lot of the Iron District in North Kansas City, except it has a Ferris wheel. So I don't see how you couldn't be excited for a project like this with a Ferris wheel in downtown Kansas City. One of the projects that I'm most excited about here in Kansas City is Rock Island Bridge, which is set to be completed in 2024. Basically what they're doing is they're taking this old railroad bridge that's 120 years old that connects the West Bottoms to Wyandotte County and they're building an entertainment district on it. The city has already approved the plans on this $12 million project and construction is underway as of March of 2023 to convert this bridge into shops and restaurants overlooking the river. Something that Kansas City gets a bad rap for is its walkability and that's why I'm absolutely pumped about this project because it ties in trails on both sides of the river which expands them from 5 miles to 20 miles. In addition to the bridge in this conversion, they're going to feature zip lines. So if you don't want to hoof it across the bridge, well, you just take the zip line and you're on the other side of the river within minutes. 65% of the space is dedicated to open public space. So it'll be a great place to go in Kansas City, grab a bite to eat, grab some coffee, and take in the views of the river. 2025 will mark the completion of the streetcar expansion. Now, if you've watched any of our pros and cons videos, you'll know that one of my biggest cons is public transportation. This new streetcar expansion will triple the size of the current route connecting the Country Club Plaza, Midtown, Downtown, Union Station, River Market, and the Berkeley Riverfront Park. That's right, it'll drop you right in front of the KC Current Stadium. My wife and I just took the kiddos down to Crown Center the other day and we live in Brookside about 10 blocks from where the furthest southern stop is going to be on the streetcar line and we were just sitting there daydreaming about a day in the not so distant future 
when we can access all of these different parts of downtown in Kansas City that we love so much without even having to drive our car, just hopping on a streetcar and taking the boys for a little day trip. The $350 million project started in the fall of 2020, and it's amazing the amount of progress that they've made over that time. A lot of the rails are already set in the cement along Main Street. But fortunately for you, if you're watching this from another state, you haven't had to deal with all of the construction and traffic congestion that we've had to deal with over the last couple of years. In the end, it's all gonna be worth it because public transportation is gonna look a whole lot different here in the next couple of years. The city also has an ambitious goal of completing the South Loop project by 2026. Over $45 million of private investment money has been raised so far for this 4.6 acre park, which will actually span across I-670. So it's going to be a park over the highway, similar to the Clyde Warren Park in Dallas and the Riverfront Park in Omaha. My family and I, we went to Omaha this last August for a music festival. We ended up taking our boys because plans got mixed up. And anyway, it was such a fun time. We stayed right in downtown Omaha and we walked to that park because it was only a couple of blocks from our hotel. And if this is anything like that park, it's going to be amazing and it will be because the same firm that was hired to design the park in Dallas and in Omaha is the same group that has been selected to design the South Loop project and they're following in the footsteps of the 15 minute city which is this concept that cities are designed in such a way where services and basic necessities are all located within a 15 minute walk or bike ride, which is why the location of this park is so important. It's right in the heart of downtown and it'll connect the Crossroads Art District to Power and Light and the Business District in downtown Kansas City. It's an exciting project for Kansas City and a unique feature that's only been replicated by a few other metropolitan areas. Kansas City is also hosting the World Cup. And I think it speaks volumes of the trajectory of Kansas City, considering that they beat out my former resident city of Denver. The World Cup will reportedly bring up to $620 million in revenue for Kansas City. Now, I didn't even mention that our brand new $1.5 billion airport was just completed in February of this year, or that Panasonic is building a $4 billion EV plant in DeSoto, Kansas, it's expected to bring over 4,000 jobs to the metro. But that's just it. There are so many reasons to be excited about living in Kansas City, and this is just over the course of the next few years. There's no doubt that Kansas City is gonna look vastly different by 2030, and frankly, I'm excited about it. But whether you're excited or not, my team and I help people buy and sell real estate here in Kansas City. So whether you're moving to, buying or selling a home in Kansas City, we would love to be your real estate resource of choice. So shoot us a call, text, email, day or night, and we got your back with moving to KC. Until next time.